the platform. I know most of you guys are Linux users, so maybe some stuff will be new to you here, and I'll be glad to ask any questions or answer any questions at the end for you. First of all, my name is Chris Moore. I'm the founder of the PCBSD project. Uh, currently, we're sponsored by IX Systems. They fund us and help us get this thing off the ground. First of all, what is PCBSD? PCBSD is essentially a desktop distribution of FreeBSD. You take FreeBSD, throw KDE on top of it, add a bunch of GUI tools, you get PCBSD. We're trying to bring it to the masses. And uh, if anyone's done a traditional FreeBSD install before, you know that can be a little bit uh, more on the difficult side. We're going to take a look at how we integrate using KDE 4. First of all, we standardize on KDE 4. With PCBSD, we are not a distro in the typical sense where you boot up and you select if I want GNOME, you know, GNOME or XFCE 4 or any other window managers. We actually default to KDE 4 and specialize just in uh, distributing that. All our tools are written in uh, Qt 4, tailored for KDE, so they are very well integrated with the platform. We also have uh, developed our own custom package management system, which we will discuss a little bit later on in the talk with some KDE4 flavor enhancements. First of all, I wanted to go through a few of the things we are adding to KDE to make it work on a BSD platform. As you know, Linux and BSD are very different, so we cannot use a lot of the tools developed on the Linux platform to manage a lot of uh, lower level free BSD apps. So we've written our own custom Qt tools that we integrate into system settings for doing things like your networking setup, um, system management, you know, tech support, uh, downloading free BSD source, ports, trees, all the things that are specific to a BSD platform. We've also recently, with PCBSD 8, started integrating a new software manager, which will have kind of a app store, if you will, where it's a built-in WebKit browser. You can download applications that have been compiled for PCBSD right through the uh, app store interface, and it'll queue them up and load them up for you. Would that be a great spot for the uh, for hooking in? Exactly, exactly. As he was talking, that was one thing I was thinking. We could tie that in. That would be great. Another custom tool we've developed for KDE is our own thumbnail generator. Um, packages on PCBSD are simply files named .pbi, and we've actually written our own thumbnail program where we can embed icons directly into, into applications when you download them. I know it seems small, but end users, especially people moving from Windows systems, they eat that stuff up. This is what makes PCBSD really unique, though. This is what we're doing that's completely different from what you'll see on FreeBSD. Our PBI package management, we use self-contained binary installers. In other words, when you download an app on PCBSD, it behaves more like an executable on Windows or with an install shield type interface where uh, double click it and it loads up. Each package contains all the dependencies, so we're not having to do dependency resolving when you install an app. If you want to install Firefox, it has everything it needs to run built into the application itself. We've then integrated this in with the KDE desktop with menus, MIME types, desktop icons, all that goodness with uh, XGG. And of course, working with the KDE thumbnail library we've written. And apps are run from their own directories. This is another cool thing we've done. We don't like having apps scattering files all over the desktop landscape and all of the operating system. So essentially, an app just lives in slash programs, makes it very easy to maintain, and nuke when you want to get rid of it. There's a couple of things we love about using KDE on PCBSD. First of all, you know, especially with four, you guys have the look and feel of a professionally designed desktop. You come from a lot of other open source window managers, and you don't necessarily see that. When you show this to an end user, again, I know somebody yesterday mentioned they did a survey where they showed KDE 4 to people telling them it was Windows 7. They were like, oh, this is so awesome. We want this. That's the image you guys present, and it does look good, and we feel that that is a professional offering. Another thing we love is that it's built mostly around Qt which is what we develop our tools in. The complete UI makes desktop transition easier. We actually have a lot of Windows users coming over, which I know is kind of weird because we're on a BSD Unix, but they see, the, they see the desktop and they like it, and it's very easy and usable. Um, we also love the flexibility for branding and theming, which James here actually does a lot of that for our default uh, desktop, and it looks really nice. And the other thing we love about KDE is you guys are constantly improving and innovating. I know you guys took a lot of heat, and we took heat when we started using KDE 4. But to tell you the truth, somebody's got to be the pioneer and take the arrows. I mean, those innovations you guys are making is what's pulling KDE into the future, and other desktops are going to have to catch up now with the new features you guys have implemented. 
couple of the things that we do have difficulties with in running this on a BSD platform. First of all, getting away from a pure Qt implementation. You know, every time KDE developers add some other library, that's another thing that has to be ported working beautifully on BSD for KDE to function properly. A good example would be a system settings printer application, which is now a Python Qt application. So, uh oh. <laughs> oh sorry. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I know you can print with KD every now and then. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's okay. But this 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 would be a good point I'd like to bring up. Originally, KDE, what was so cool about it was it was a very pure Qt in integration. You know, as soon as you had Qt working, KDE just ran. I think we need to be careful and avoid some of the desire to just pull in different pieces of things from other projects because every other thing you pull in is another potential point of failure. No. Well, some people are telling us we should cooperate, and then you say we should, you know, screw everyone and write it ourselves. Yep. <laughs> well, from a di distribution side of it, we prefer simpler. Simpler means less points of failures, less potential problems, and we go to put it together for the end users. The end users just care that it works. You know, so we would prefer to just see things which are simple. There's less opportunities for something to fail. Um, another thing we have to be careful and avoid is Linuxisms. Um, I know most of you guys come from a Linux background, but there are interfaces and ways you can design which may help us in the porting process. You know, Matt had a good example. I don't know if there's any Copy developers here. Okay. Um, webcam support. I think you said it's integrated where it just defaults to a Linux device driver name, and in the GUI there's no way to select another driver name. Well, on FreeBSD that's going to be different. So. We need to try and avoid as many of those Linuxisms as we can and make it truly cross-platform and work easier with, uh, with our, our stuff. Um, another thing, package management. Because of the way we do our PBI system, where everything's fully uh, integrated into one directory, a good example would be Amarok or Conversation. Anytime we have a KDE4 app that we don't distribute with the default installation and we roll a separate PBI for, we are now stuck including extra KDE libs on the hard drive that, because it has to be complete, we don't want to issue it sharing on something on the desktop which may change in six months. We're stuck including a lot of extra libraries that maybe aren't necessary. A good example would be is if you're using you know, some weird Python script to run that isn't really necessary. Again, we've got to include an entire Python installation in that PBI to make it run, which it works. It's just a little tedious and eats up extra disk space. So that, that would be one of our, our difficulties we're, so we're seeing. So basically for a Python uh, applet that's like one kilobyte, you have to add like 20 megabytes. If, if we build a, yeah, if we build a PBI of it. Usually we don't do that with the small little apps. That would just be a script somebody would download and run. But if it's, but if you're using some other GUI, which is 98% cute, but then uses Python for one little function, just because the developer decided to do that, now we've got to include 40 megabytes of Python, and we've got to figure out, okay, why isn't Python working properly here on BSD, and fix it. make it part of like the base package? Uh, we, we do have it as part of the base package, but again, with PBIs being separate from the operating system itself, the idea is with the PBI, you can install it, and then we can issue updates to our desktop, completely changing the entire package set that's installed, and it doesn't affect your application. Okay. Yeah, that's you that's what. What was that? You promised a lot. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing, and it has actually worked pretty well so far. Um, again, you eat up a lot of disk space, so that is the downside. But on the plus side, especially from Windows users coming over, it just works. They're not having to sit here and worry about dependency resolution. Okay, I'm going to install X app, and now it's going to modify my base desktop as well because it needs this newer library. We're trying to keep it simple and reduce points of failure. Well, you eat up RAM, too. Yeah, you do eat up RAM. Actually, that's one thing we are working on. We have a couple ideas we're kicking around on ways to fake shared libraries. <laughs> so that you don't eat up RAM, but still maintain the complete uh, system where it's not dependency based or prone to dependency failures. Um, how do you track um, the included um, packages for security updates? We, uh, we actually piggyback off the FreeBSD ports tree when we build these. So we can actually track and monitor when a package has some security update and then trigger a new PBI update and it gets rolled out to the end users. So we are doing that. But anyway, that's, that's just kind of a brief overview of what we're doing on PCBSD. Obviously, there's a lot more to it on different aspects, but I will be happy to entertain any questions. I was just wondering if you 
have a solid back end, or how does that work? We do have a very basic implementation of it. It's not working very well. We would love some help porting with that if there's anyone in here who, who would. I am not one of the KDE porters, just so everyone's aware. We have a team of good guys who actually do the porting of KDE from Linux to FreeBSD. Then we piggyback, build off of that, and actually turn it into an installable desktop in the end. But yeah, I know solid integration. We've had some issues with that, detecting devices properly and working correctly on FreeBSD. I think the new USB stuff needs some work. So, yeah. Uh, I tried the uh, PCBSD four years ago, mm -hmm. and I was really impressed because uh, it was really easy to install it sure. in a notebook. And uh, at that time, I remember that uh, Wi-Fi drivers for Linux for web was not that great. So sure. Far. And everything worked out of the box using PCBSD. Mm -hmm. But uh, after I played for one or two weeks, I decided to return to Linux, mostly because of web. Not a single friend of mine who are using PC <laughs> sure. So my question is, uh, do you guys uh, know how how many people are actually using PC BSD or as uh, on a daily basis? And second, uh, are you guys planning like a marketing uh, effort or something like that to actually sell it? Sure. Um, as far as usage goes, I mean, we have a couple stat sites we've tried linking into. At one point, they showed anywhere from 30 to 40,000 desktops booting up on it and running it on a daily basis. But uh, that stat site's actually not working anymore, so I'm not sure what the current number is. As far as advertising and marketing, IX Systems and Matt over here is with that. They, they've been helping us, sending us to these trade shows and just talking about it. And it's mostly word of mouth. That's, that's the way we're getting around. Um, it's usually a lot of users who have switched from Windows, especially if you go to our mailing list, you find a lot of these guys are Windows users who have come over and then they tell their friends, go, oh, this is so cool, I got off of Microsoft. We're trying to provide a gateway for them to get them on a BSD platform. They don't even know it, but then they're starting to take the next step and become a little bit more of a technical user. Any other questions? Um, how can the KD project help the BSD improve their integration? That, yeah, those kind of things, integrating with hardware, especially in device drivers, that's where we could use some help, I think. Uh, the guys we have are doing a good job, but again, it's limited resources, it's volunteers, so we can always use extra help getting solid to work properly. Um, I know uh, some, if there's any HAL experts in the room, HAL is another big one where we've had to fight with that one from time to time. Do you, feel, do you, you guys feel like they have? A couple of the guys are actually KDE committers now, so they, they are fairly well connected to the KDE community and have actually managed to push some patches upstream, which is nice. And we're hoping to do more of that in the future. As, as we find these bugs, we can get them upstream so that they're out of our hair dealing with neutral release. Any other questions? Yeah. I if I missed this, but the shared libraries, how much duplication is there? Well, it depends. How much shared and what, what do you duplicate? Well, we, we try not to share anything, if possible. FreeBSD is a base operating system on its own. It's not just... Multiple what was that? You, you could end up having multiple queues, and we actually had some, some occasions where that was useful back when we were going, I think, from 4.3 to 4.5 or something. We had some apps that worked better on one, didn't work good on the other, and we couldn't have them both in the same shared directory. So because they were including their own queues, they still ran these applications. So you have no sharing where you're able to manipulate the sharing? We have, per, between the PBIs, pretty much no sharing. The only sharing we try to do is with the actual FreeBSD base libraries. FreeBSD's got its own libc and all the, the very generic low-level libraries, and we do share those. We assume that if you're running on PCBSD 8, that it's going to be built on a FreeBSD 8.x platform, and those libraries will exist for the entire life cycle. But as far as the user land, the port libraries, we just assume those aren't going to be there because it seems like every year, they've been replaced or they're, they've been mixed with some incompatible version. So we can still run the same version of Firefox from four years ago on, this, on a brand new system running KDE 4 or, or any other app because they include the, the libraries. Um, for the BSD, um, I guess a standard base, they're mm -hmm. relatively static. Do you allow version updates in those frequently? Or would it be possible to get, say, queues into that standard set of libraries? I don't think licensing-wise they would allow that. Yeah, we only allow BSD licensing. Yeah. 
Yeah, they don't include any, there's no X in the base. It's just the default free BSD. You know, console's it, baby. That's what you got. We've got the port system to use. Yeah, the port system is what allows us to add that on top, but that's not in the FreeBSD base. Like you said, it's all BSD licensed that stuff. Makes yeah, I get away with it. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you guys very much. <laughs> can, you, can you show an install real quick of PBI install? Sure. Um, actually, I have another note here. Since uh, I'm involved with uh, KE on OS 10, mm -hmm. it's great that there are other BSD folks around because it kind of helps share the load. So what you guys are doing actually really helps with the OS 10 work. Oh, excellent. You, we, you and I fix the same problems. I see the commits. Yeah. And we have the same compile issues, the same library. We need to keep in touch more because sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, this has a side benefit to, to other people. Well, I'd admit, yeah, you probably run into that more on those other platforms as well because we're trying to do what their system does. But yeah, let me go ahead and see if I can show you guys a PBI install really quick here. Just as an example. Um, well, I don't think I have Moo Commander installed. So you go ahead and enter your password, and this is what this is what brings over the Windows users. It looks, for all intents and purposes, very Windows, you know, ish. It's just simple matter of next, next, and it installs. And because it's all in its own directory, it's in one spot. It's not monkeying with your KDE files or any other libraries. The beauty of this is we don't have to worry about some app destroying some other app. We don't have to worry about a GTK update here destroying some GTK update over here and met, you know, cross pollution, if you were. But don't you have a massive amount of duplication on this? We do, we do. Um, and some people, what was that? Do any that's actually one of the ideas yeah, we're exploring is some hard link. Exactly, that's one of the things we're exploring for a future release to try and reduce some space. Yeah, so, so you were telling me earlier about the ZFS feature that allows you to essentially make the process of copying, right? Mm -hmm. So now that you have that ability to have ZFS as your root install, mm -hmm. is that turned on by default? Like, could you use that to? We may be able to. We don't. We don't assume everyone's running on ZFS though, because it's if, yeah. If, if, if available, yeah, sure, we could add something like that. We don't yet. Uh, ZFS. I think it may be a little while before it takes off big on the desktop side of things, just because I was telling you about the memory requirements. They're saying four gigs of RAM, 64-bit, and we still see a lot of people running on one gig and 32-bit. So. Yeah, but that PCB is the It, it will, this will require. So but that's, that's what it does. Um, the PBI system, what it does is it also adds the wrapper stuff for all your desktop icons, your K menu, your MIME type management. So I know a lot of our ports tree, especially on the FreeBSD side, they don't add any icons, they don't add any MIME types, they don't register any of that. So we've gone ahead and added all those niceties in that an end user would expect. Well, and then as well. it becomes a listed application in your ad repo. Mm -hmm. And you then you, the yeah. You know, can go through, and it looks very similar. Yeah. Program. And you just click that, remove that one. You don't have to worry about removing accidentally some shared library, which means next time you try and reboot in the KDE, it's going to barf on you. Oh. So, Chris, we burned some, uh, some of your 8 beta oh. DVDs. So yeah, there. if anyone wants to try it, you know, see what FreeBSD is like. Yeah, and it is a lot. Oh, that's one thing we've started doing on 8. We're actually rolling a live DVD now as well. So if you want to actually boot it up, see what FreeBSD base looks like on it, how it talks to your hardware, that's a cool way to do it. And uh, they're, all, they're the 64 bit versions because so many Linux users have been trash talking. You know, <laughs> oh, you, you have a 64 bit desktop. Well, this one has 64 bit NVIDIA. You know, 32-bit yeah. um, wine on the 64 works, and so there you go. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the sick thing is, a lot of our users, Wine's our most popular app downloaded because people are playing games on PCBSD. I don't know. That's just just what people are doing, but it's it's cool. You know, to at least be able to run the 32-bit on 64 now. Say what? Do you use the FDUs utility in your pipeline? I, I couldn't hear, sorry. FDUs? No, we did not. I should maybe look at it. Do you want to say, say a bit about this? But okay. Find a lot of duplication and stuff. Sure, I'll we'll take a look at that. Do you like big boards and things like SVG files? Sure, sure. <coughs> cool deal. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. Thank you, guys.